Now we're going to talk about some ways to reduce dose in fluoroscopy, some radiation protection methods, both for patients and for technologists. We'll get in more detail with um, rad safety, but there are some things that I want you to know now for fluoro. Mainly in fluoro, um, the exposure switch type is referred to as a dead man switch. What does that mean? Uh, when you step on the pedal, it fluoros, and when you shake your foot off, it's dead. There's no more fluoroscopy happening. Um, so it's usually the foot switch that the radiologist is using in fluoroscopy. Um, they step on the pedal with their foot, and uh, when they come off, there's no more radiation happening. So dead man switch is something I want you to know. In mobile fluoro, your um, exposure switch should be on a six foot cord. You should be able to get two meters away um, and be able to fluoro that way if needed. There's something called last image hold and your radiologists use it a lot of times on pediatric cases. When they're doing fluoro, they are moving that image intensifier over the patient, taking formal exposures, but with pediatrics, one of our main goals is to reduce dose, right? So something they can do is as they're fluoroing, when they stop, whatever's on the screen, they can freeze it or hold it instead of taking that formal exposure and increasing their dose again. If you think of it um, kind of like your phone, when you're scrolling and you want to take a screenshot of something, you just freeze whatever is on the screen. So last image hold is not the last image of the case. It is freezing whatever is on the screen instead of taking an actual picture. And I just have an image here. This is our floral machine. Um, so these little shot saves options um, will be what last image holds would be. And for pediatrics, we use it quite a lot. Um, it is not as, um, sometimes it's not as good of a quality of taking a formal exposure, but they might weigh their options. And for pediatrics, we can usually use the last image hold to reduce dose. Grid removal, remember there are grids in your image intensifiers and for pediatrics, we can remove them. There is also collimation. So, and in fluoro, we have um, a collimation where they can take an image and then use the collimation settings to Kind of line up where they want to be before taking another one and so this was an example here they're going to collimate into this area so when they take the next exposure only here will then um, be visualized so we know collimation beam restriction saving is going to reduce dose there is collimation on your c-arm you have two options you have your iris which is a circle or the leaves which are the straight up and down side to side again uh collimating um, reduces dose. There are a few settings um, more specifically I think to fluoro and C arms um, when we're trying to reduce dose. I want you to know on your foot pedal these um, icons. So the eye is um, extra exposure. If you stand on it and kind of stay on it it's going to fluoro. The I with the plus is called boost. This is a high dose exposure. It should only be used when necessary because it's giving it a high dose. So you'll notice um, an additional audible tone when you're using this. So there should be an additional indicator. Both of these icons, again, are on your hand um, remote if you have one. There are also some settings on your CRM that you can use. Um, and depending on radiologist or type of exam, you may use these. So there's a low dose option that's going to reduce it by 50%. And then there's a pulsed option um, that can reduce exposures significantly more. Pulse setting in fluoro, there's an option on the screen. It'll say continuous fluoro, or it might give you options for pulses. Ours gives us 3, 7.5, and 15 as options. And what this means is when your radiologist steps on the pedal, if it's continuous fluoro, the beam is on until they take that foot off. If it's a pulse setting, when they step on it, the beam is given in pulses and it's by a certain time frame. So each of these settings, each of these pulse settings are on a specific time frame. And so the 
smallest pulses will have a longer beam off time. Mm -hmm. It might kind of result in maybe a little bit of a choppier image. Um, but again, we're working on reducing dose. And if we don't need the continuous um, beam on time, it's going to kind of save everybody some dose. Intermittent fluoro, I want you to think, um, you know, waiting for a bladder to fill. Intermittent is your radiologist kind of taking a peek, stepping on the fluoro pedal, coming off, waiting a little bit of time, doing another check to see if the bladder is full. Um, it's kind of just on off. It's not a certain specific time frame and it's not a setting on the machine. It's just them peaking intermittently. Source to skin distance. So remember that C arm. We want to be aware of the distance between our x-ray source and our patient's skin. There are two distances that we have to know and memorize. I want you to know them for ART. Mobile fluoro, which is your C arm, we're going to be 12 inches or 30 centimeters source to skin distance. Um, and stationary fluoro is 15 inches or 38, 38 centimeters. How can we remember this? My hint is mobile fluoro, I want you to think OR. And you could say, I'm going to take lunch at 1230 in the OR to help you remember 12 or th and 30. Um, if you have any other ideas, let me know. Being aware of your image intensifier placement is also important. Um, for you also as a technologist, how to reduce your dose. Ideally, the x-ray source should be underneath the patient because of the way the beam scatters. The image intensifier should be on top. If for some reason you have to flip it, um, the scatter radiation will be more significant. And being aware of your OID distances in the floor room, I want you to make sure um, ideally you're behind that protective curtain or 90 degrees from the patient. So being aware of that, making sure you have lead on and increasing your distance, all of those things. The highest exposure is on the x-ray tube side. So make sure we're aware of where, where we are standing um, for C-arm cases. Patient thickness. We know um, as patient thickness increases, the amount of scatter increases. And as technologists, our main dose is from scatter. Right. So being aware when you're doing a C-arm case in the lateral position, where should you be standing? Well, the highest um, scatter is going to be and in, in dose area is going to be at the source. So we should be standing behind the C-arm with an increased distance. And if you can use your remote and step back, even better. Ways to protect yourselves, you know this, uh, decrease the amount of time you're near that you know, beam or scatter area, increase your distance. Don't stand directly next to the patient if you can prevent it. Wear your dosimeter outside your lead apron. Um, your lead apron and thyroid shields, the absolute minimum required is 0.25, but for fluoroscopy, 0.5 is recommended. If you're wearing just um, the lead in the front, don't turn your back because then you're going to be getting exposed. If you want a wraparound lead, um, you can then turn around. There are um, the lead curtain and the Bucky slot cover. They have to be 0.25 millimeters of lead. These two things are to protect technologists and radiologists. These are not patient protection. Um, these are for us. Okay. If you can keep the image intensifier closer to the patient, decreasing the OID, it reduces the amount of scatter. There should be a radiation light that turns on when we're exposing, and there should be um, a timer. So for, for fluoroscopy, we ideally wanna keep our exposure time under five minutes. When we reach five minutes, there should be a, a sound and a, there should be some sort of alert. Um, so we should be calculating that. So try and keep it under five minutes if we can. Um, so there should be a five minute timer involved. So what do I want you to know about fluoro? I want you to know where it is, what it does, the position of it, how it converts um, the x-ray photons through the process of input phosphor, photocathode, the lenses, the output phosphor. Um, if it's a flat panel detector, how what process does it use? How do we set KVP in mass? Do you know what automatic brightness control is? What are the three gains? How does magnification mode um, affect the image and patient dose? 
what are some errors, and how can you decrease dose for fluoro. So I hope that wraps it up, and I hope it's helpful.